Today, we embark on a journey that will transport us back in time to the golden era of miniature painting, where nostalgia reigns supreme and creativity knows no bounds. Let's unleash the spirit of the 90s and relive the joy of painting like it's 1994. My name is Oliver, and in this video, we pay tribute to a time when the Warhammer hobby thrived and Games Workshop unleashed an iconic range of Citadel paints. I have spent weeks scouring the internet for this set and finally managed to pick up a complete box that physically represents my youth. For me, as a young man of about seven, I was blown away by everything I saw in the Games Workshop store. The artwork, the style, the colours. I remember it just like it was yesterday. Ben, my eldest brother, picked up a box of Space Marines. Joe, the next in line, came home with some Tyranids, whilst I was instantly drawn to the Eldar. Armed with these classic paints, I'll attempt to bring life back to a collection of some of my first models. From the vibrant greens of Goblin Green to the regal blues of Enchanted Blue, we dive headfirst into the palette that defined an era. Now, this isn't a tutorial on how to perfectly blend colours or how to create mind-blowing gradients. No, we're going old school where the goal was to slap on some paint, have fun and see what happens. Equipped with the original starter brush that came with the set, three models all stripped cleaned and ready to go. And then we have the paints, right? They've all been Vortex mixed. Um, I haven't opened any of them up yet. This is genuinely the first time I'll open these paint pots. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect. I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be great uh, holding up to today's standards of paints, but that's not really what the point of this video is. The point is to enjoy being young again, right? Uh, we all strive for that and we can't do anything about it. We just get older, older every day, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a whirl at these now. The other thing is, I haven't smelt them, I haven't opened one, so I'm curious to see um, just how this smells. So let's give it a whirl. But do you know, do you know I forgot how they smell? That's crazy. These paints smell differently to today's paints, right? They, um, do you know what that smells like? That smells like, that smells like my mum's dining room table back when me and my brother Ben and Joe would be, uh, would be painting miniatures then, wow. I, I completely forgot that's how they smelt. It smells like my youth. Um, you know, it smells like really, really sweet Play-Doh. Um, that's kind of how that smells. That's like a really strong smell. I don't know how many years I've just shaved off the end of my life doing that, probably 10 years. But wow, I, I wasn't expecting that. I, I feel like, genuinely feel like I've been like, like that smell just reminds me of those other times. That's, that's kind of a really weird experience. Um, I, I completely forgot that's how they all smell. Uh, this one hasn't even been opened, wow. Snake by leather hasn't even been unsealed and neither has the flesh wash. Um, I'm gonna have to get a sexy bit of B-roll of that. I'm gonna be opening this bad boy up and then I'll, um, I'll paint some miniatures and I'll catch back up with you guys in a bit. Right, with everything in place and ready to go, I undercoated the models. I used black for the Chaos Warrior and white for the Eldar Guardian and the Space Marine. We are going to go for blue, Ultramarines, the poster boys since the 90s, the ultimate Space Marine. I used Enchanted Blue and watered this down to give it some really nice thin coverage. Two thin coats really does apply back in these days, and I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with just how good the coverage was. We now have that lovely, vibrant blue that we're all used to back in the 90s. Then it's onto the shoulder trims and any other details. Now, these are going to be yellow, and if memory serves me correctly, the yellow has atrocious coverage. So make sure any parts you're going to paint yellow are crystal clear and clean, because it will not cover over any colors. As you can see, it is a truly beautiful color, but it's not really a great paint. Um, any parts that are not straight white will just look green. The brown suffers from something pretty similar. Uh, I did go over a couple of coats in the end and that did fix the issue but as you can see even after painting it it still goes a sort of murky green. Then onto the bolt gun, the red. Again I thinned this to make sure it's nice and smooth but also there you can see the blue straight through a couple of coats of the red. So if you're doing this thin it, two coats. I can't really reiterate that enough. Uh, I actually ended up going back to tidy things up with some white so I could cover them again with the same paint. The black works wonderfully. You can water this down and it'll act almost like a contrast paint. 
If you were to apply this over something with a Xenophil, I think you would get a really nice effect for very little work. Next up, it was the Flesh Wash. I was applying this over the yellow and it's a very funny color. It's kind of a browny green mix. It's a bit dirty and it's not very easy to control. So with a bit of work, I went back in, cleaned up some edges, added the whites back in to give the yellowy glaze over the top and then started adding in highlights. Ultimately, I think the model came out pretty good. If I was to do things again, I'd maybe have made sure everything was extra clean before I applied any colors over the top of anything. The model obviously needs transfers. I don't have any back from the 90s, but I do have some older sets that do fit these models. I did use Microsol and Microset here to help. I'm not sure if they were around back in the day, but it certainly gives it a better finish. Then it's the glory step, the beautiful goblin green base, something we all associate with old retro models, particularly stuff from the second edition. I'll leave you with some, some lovely shots. And with that, the Ultramarine is pretty much done. I do need to flock the base, but I will do that together at the end with the other models as kind of a beautiful montage of, of just how these models look when they're done. Next up is the Chaos Warrior. Now, this was undercoated black. I attempted to paint red over it and it was an absolute disaster. So I stripped it and then to keep it fair, I sprayed it black and then gave it a white zenithal. Now, we didn't really use zenithals, so I certainly didn't back in the day, but it's just the only way to get these paints to, to cover. I cleaned the blacks back up again and used more Chaos Black just to pick out extra details. This model is a funny one in the, in the box set because it paints very differently to the Ultramarine. We didn't have washes or contrast paints, which would make this job so much easier. So I had to get creative as we only had 10 paints and make some mixes. I mixed in a sort of ready brownie wash and then started glazing or layering up the reds. In the picture, it ends up as kind of an orange finish. I didn't want to go pink, so I started adding more yellow to the red. And it was actually a really fun process, something I haven't really mixed or highlighted this way in a long, long time. So it was a true joy, really, to sort of see this one pick up as it went along. And I felt like I learned a few new skills. I was a bit concerned I'd do a terrible job on this one, but personally, I'm pretty happy with the result. I, I like the whole red finish on this. All it needed now was a bit of silver to cover in some gaps. Mythil silver, is a lovely color and the coverage is actually very good, but it is not the base color. I think bolt gun metal back then was kind of the darker metal. So I only used this on various points just to add some color. Back in with a goblin green base, one or two thin coats just to keep it nice and beautiful. And there we have it. Now I did decide to keep the ax black because I didn't think the mythil silver looked great as a finished result. And finally, it's the Eldar Guardian. This is the model my first model, the first model I ever painted. It's not this particular one, but this brings back massive memories for me. Now it isn't and wasn't a particularly easy scheme. It is Ayandan, which is yellow all over with a blue head and blue other details. Even now, this would be a difficult scheme to do, but with these paints, the blue is beautiful. But if you make any mistakes over that yellow, you're gonna pay for it by having to use whites and yellows to clean it back up. Also, these older models don't have definitive edges to something, so sometimes, you're making up details because it, it isn't a detail. Over in with the gun with the red, I'm very careful here to make sure I don't mess up the yellow. And actually there are plenty of gems on this model. So it's easier just not to paint over those as well. I had to be super careful to clean everything up. So I needed a nice point. And there goes five years off the life and probably another five because who knows what is in these old paints. Uh, I came back in with some goblin green for the gems on the left side and then the red on the right hand side. I did have to do a lot of work off camera to keep it clean because um, it was a very delicate process, but ultimately I'm pretty happy with the result. Again, I didn't have the original Eldar transfers, but I had something pretty similar. I wanted a nice yellow part on his head. I don't think I ever used transfers back when I was a child, but I certainly understand how to use them now and they are such a great addition. And with the beautiful light, the model is almost done and we go back in with the goblin green base. I'm pretty happy with that. I'd have been happy with that 30 years ago. I'd have been happy with that 10 years ago. And I'm happy with that now. The only thing left to do is to get some flock. And I would just use some fast dry basing glue here from Geek Gaming Scenics, spread it around and then dunk it. But I wanted to throw it around because it's lovely to see this old sawdust flock uh, in action. And there we have it. What do you think of those? I'm honestly really happy with the result and genuinely enjoyed painting these. I feel like we've turned these miniatures into vibrant relics from the past. It's been great fun having a go with the old paints again. Are they good? Uh, not particularly, but they sure hit that sweet nostalgic spot. 
Do you want to see more second edition stuff? If you do, just let me know because personally, I'm pretty obsessed with it right now and I might have accidentally traded, bought or found a full Eldar army. If you haven't already watched my previous video, go and check it out. I built a full table of terrain using the classic 1996 Games Workshop terrain book. And yes, it heavily features these spiky cactus balls of paint. If you enjoyed the video, please do remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the alarm bell for more videos to come. Make sure to check out the links below if you want to support the channel. We have a store selling all of your gaming goodies based in the EU and a link to Patreon, which will give you access to a private Discord as well as a regular hobby hangout. With that, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.